Hello, everybody. How is everyone doing? We finally made it, guys. We're here. We're live. If you're here, let me know. It says there's five people here. Two of them might be me because I'm trying to make sure the stream is running okay. But if you're here, let me know in the comments. And uh, let me tell you guys, this was a this was this this was hard to to set up. Um, first things first. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Want to make sure you can hear me fine. Is the music too loud? Let me know. Let me know all those things. Um, uh, but yeah, this was a. Uh, what up, Anthony? This was um. Oh, kind of a weird stream to get set up because yeah my so i started i started i transferred all all my stuff from up here at the studio and uh brought my computer up brought my keyboard my trackpad my hard drives everything up that i needed to stream wanted to get to the house and uh everything's working fine this morning got up here plugged my uh all my stuff in got it, camera set up mic set up everything set up and i went to log into my uh billionaires gh what's going on went to log into my mac and uh my keyboard i couldn't even log in couldn't do anything it was really really kind of stuck with um this home screen and i just kind of uh kept trying the same thing over and over again i kind of dove into insanity and uh you know, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome, and it's just it, nothing worked. Nothing worked. So yeah, uh, finally got this thing. Finally got this thing uh, going after a sixty dollar purchase for a new, <laughs> new keyboard, which is actually pretty sweet because I think I needed a new keyboard anyway. But the old keyboard didn't work. Bluetooth did not connect. Kind of a pain in the butt. Tried another keyboard. Troubleshooted everything. Restarted my computer a million times. Um, so yeah, I was supposed to start this at eleven. I was actually hoping to be wrapping up this stream right about now, but we're going to be starting that we photographed this past weekend. Um, won't be editing the entire wedding. What we're going to be doing actually is uh, going through and editing the images that I want to uh, batch process using batch AI and uh, AI editing software. So I'll be editing the reference images of that. And then we're going to go through the blog images, the sneak peek images that I'm going to be putting up on my website this week for the couple. And, uh, We'll be editing those. So all in all, it's going to be around 200-ish photos, maybe a little bit more, which is uh, about a quarter of what I will be delivering to them. So you guys are going to see uh, a little bit of that process. Didn't want to keep you on the entire, didn't want to keep you for the entire editing session because that's a lot. It's a lot of editing that'll happen. And um, so anyway, let's um, let's dive into let's dive into that, and we can get we can get started here. Do, do, do. Let's hope you can see Lightroom. Can you see Lightroom? Yes, good. You can see my face hopefully here a bit too. And uh, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. If you can't see Lightroom, let me know, but, but it looks like you can. All right. So Batch AI, if you're not familiar with Batch, I've been using this for, um, I don't know, about 10 months, nine, 10 months and love it. Pretty much the process of batches to, uh, you're going to edit reference images about 10 to 15% of the amount of photos that you're editing. So in this case, I'm editing, uh, 1200 or so pictures batch has select, I've selected, uh, let's see. I've selected 185 images to process with batch which is, um, I don't actually, I'm very bad at math, but it's just under 10%, I think. Um, batch is pretty good at what it does. So uh, let me actually, hang on, let me get rid of, let me show you the full screen here that way you can see everything. Batch is pretty good at what it does. So I'm going to edit these images first, and then we're going to batch process. You'll see how, how it all works. Uh, if you want to get started with batch, there's a link down in my description um, of this video, or there should be to get started using batch AI, uh, really affordable, really great people over there who made this software. So uh, we're going to get started on this. The way I like to do this is I have each camera separated into its own tab over here on the left. And I just like to go camera by camera just to make sure that I'm editing these photos the way I want them to be edited. So let's, let's actually start here. And, and doing this means that I'm not mixing up the, uh, I'm not mixing up my wife's camera with my other two cameras and confusing the AI on how these photos should be, should be edited. So 
Yes, yes, yes. If you have any questions throughout the stream about anything at all, photography related or not, please let me know. We'd love to answer these questions. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's about it. So we're just going to get started here. Um, I have my presets here on the left. And I am using the Archetype Process film profiles today. been using these for most of 20 22 and going to be using these a lot in 2023 and pretty much these profiles are like film profiles right so all you got to do is come into here and you can see some ektar film some portra 160 portra 400 and as you hover over you can see how it how it changes uh they did make a like a frontier scanner version and an oritsu scanner so the color profiles will be a little bit different um, in the same way that if you scan film on a Frontier scanner versus an Uritsu scanner, you're going to get a different look. Um, so they got some Portra, some Kodak there. You got some uh, Fuji, and then I have a monochrome bundle. So pretty much this applies uh, like a base layer over top of everything, and then you can go through and edit each of the each of the sliders. And it's not like a preset where if I were to just apply a preset, it's going to change these sliders. Applying the profile changes the overall look of the image, and then I can go through the sliders and, and develop my look a little bit. So that's what... Um, that's what I've been using. Been loving, loving these profiles. So again, I think I have a link in the description to to check these out. But we're just gonna be going Im image by image here. And so shot down in a uh, Philly area. We were down in, in the city for these this wedding. Uh, nice little church wedding, and uh, then we bounced over to Jersey for the reception. How has everybody been doing with uh, bookings for this year? Is everybody kind of uh, pretty good with with 2023? Are you guys hoping to book some more? Are you guys fully booked out? What's the uh, what's the consensus here? All right. And we're just toning things down here a bit. Making sure the colors are all, all good. The white balance is good. You got some window light versus some tungsten light in the room. We pretty much want to make sure that we get this pretty close to, to perfect. That way batch can do its thing. Beth, how you doing, man? Hoping to get more bookings. Totally. Where are you sitting for for right now, and how many more do you want to? How many more do you want to book? We're in the same boat, actually. We're hoping to get another like two or three, two or three bookings for 2023. We actually had somebody cancel their wedding the other day, so we're hoping to make up for that one. Um, always a little weird when that happens. I'm so nosy. I always want to know why, but I never, I never ask because obviously that would be weird. Um, I always want to know why did y'all call off your wedding? A lot of these, some of these are really going to be in black and white here. So it's, sometimes I'm editing and I'm like, "Ugh, this is going to be black and white." But for the sake of batch processing with this AI, like this is going to be a black and white image for sure. But because other images are dependent upon how this image looks. I need it to be in color. Same with this one. Like, honestly, this will probably be a black and white photo. A lot of my getting ready shots end up being black and white. Currently going through the camera. Uh, one of the cameras I use, I dual wheel cameras on wedding days now. Um, this one had a 40 millimeter lens on it. And so I'm editing uh, Sony 40 millimeter. So I use for the majority of the day on this camera here. My other camera has a 50 millimeter on it. I know it's very close, but they actually look really, really different. I'm a starting wedding photographer. Any booking would be perfect for me. Yeah, totally. I've been there, man. Um, totally been there. Um, I play advise like just connecting with vendors, connecting with venues and things like that, try and get your foot in the door, hosting some 
hosting some free sessions. I know people are all about like, don't shoot for free, but as long as it's on your terms, then I think shooting for free is okay. Um, you got to build a portfolio right before you can ask people to give you money to to trust you with with their memories. So don't be afraid to to shoot for free a bit. As long as it's on your terms, if someone's coming to you and asking you to shoot a session for them, make sure you charge them money. But shooting for free is is totally okay. Do it on your terms, you know. I've got a denoise this sucker. Oh, John, I'm so sorry. Hopefully that medical reason, whatever that may be, has been solved and you'll be able to be back in action pretty quickly for the second half of this year. I can imagine how tough that must be. Glad you're here with us though, man. Welcome. This will again also likely be a black and white image. It's just going to pop more. You can see there's like orange lighting coming from here and daylight or uh, white tungsten coming down here. It's just going to look better and like in a black and white, like that just looks way better. So again, some of these images are, are going to be, are going to be in black and white. Same with this one. It's going to be black and white. For the sake of batch, we're just going to keep plugging away with the color version. was dark too billionaires says i am having four weddings booked or, booked already awesome man awesome what do you what's your goal what are you trying to what are you trying to hit always good to have a goal in mind always good to have a number you're aiming for for us we try to hit about i don't know 20 25 or so weddings a year Right around that number, just a few off. Yeah, John, using the archetype profiles. Awesome, awesome. I love these things, man. Yeah, my I feel like every couple of months I like discover a different way of editing with them. And it's uh honestly, you don't even really need much. Like if you wanted to keep it really, really, really simple, you could really just choose like a single profile and just boost some of the exposure. Like I've seen some people in the archetype process, like group on Facebook, do that. Like they just, they'll select the profile and they'll just increase the exposure a bit and like maybe adjust white balance and they'll call it a day. And I'm like, that is, that is such an easy way to do it. But I don't know. I like to, I like to mess around with it a little bit. No wrong way. No wrong way to do it, really. Ceremonies are always tough. Always a little bit. Always a little bit. Oh my gosh, you can see me up in this mirror here. <laughs> That's awesome. Look at that. Man, it's kind of like a some selfie action there. I'm going to leave that in there as a little Easter egg for them, a little surprise. If I was really a parent, I would try and get that out, but no thanks. You can actually see my wife is back here, and I was boosting. I'm at ISO 4000 right now. Uh, good bit of grain. Good bit of grain happening. For sure. Look at this lady. She's trying to peek at, at Brian there. Uh, pretty much, I'm just copying and pasting these settings and just going through each one here. Um, the sharpening is really high right now. Let's turn that down.
again, a lot of my church images, I end up turning black and white too. It just gives a, I don't know, in my head, it just gives like a classier vibe to it, but we'll see. We'll see when it comes to that. We'll see what happens. But yeah, copying and pasting. Everything looking pretty consistent. The problem I find with churches is that the altars end up being so bright. Like you can see how bright up here is. Um, like look at this picture. Like look how bright it is behind them because they light the altar and then the subject ends up falling into into shadow. Into like silhouette almost. It gets really tough. Always prefer to shoot outdoors if possible, but totally understand the, the tradition, the need for getting married in a church. Totally get it. Aiming at 50 weddings in 2023. Holy cow. That's a lot of weddings, man. That's a lot of weddings. How am I liking the archetype? Monochrome profiles. That's the only one I don't have yet. Uh, I ended up caving and getting it just because I, I was like, I have the other two, so we might as well get the, the monochrome. I like it. I mean, I like the... I like the different looks. I use black and white a lot. So um, I'm not partial really to either of these. I think the Kodak Tri-X looks really great, but I also love the Delta 3200, the Ilford 3200. Um, but yeah, I, you can't go wrong with either. Um, but yeah, they, I mean, they're great. I, I mean, I, I would recommend getting them. Why not? I know they're a little pricey, but... For the look, I, I just like it. Worth it for me anyway. I use so much, I use black and white so, so frequently that. Like these will probably be black and white. There's not much I can do to solve the issue of this daylight balance light over here and this tungsten hitting her face and like black and white is, it just, it just looks better. So like we're, that's what we're going to end up, end up doing in the edit, but. Same with this. Like this will probably look better in black and white. Just because look how orange it is on their front. And I'm sure I could go in and like mask them out and tone down the orange or something. Or even tone down the orange here. Like that does it a bit. John, the other thing that you got to get um, is these... Um, camera optimizers from Dustin, who is like, who runs the archetype profiles. Um, he has these optimizers for each and every camera pretty much. And it adjusts the sensor to like, I don't know, like a standard essentially. So like I have a Sony a seven three since that's what we're shooting on. And it adjusts the HSL sliders to like match how the film should look if it was shot on film. Uh, those I found in like the Facebook group, if you search like camera optimizers, those should appear in the Facebook group um, for the archetype process. Uh, those definitely worth getting too. So, and they're free. I think if I don't know if I mentioned that, those those should be free. Definitely worth getting. Absolutely. You view an area at a wedding venue on the day. This is a great black and white spot, or does the combo of different lighting situations dictate a black and white image? Yeah, so I, a lot of the time it is like uh, I can see the I can see the place in person, and I'm like, yeah, this lighting is a little bit tough. Um, probably going to make this black and white because of the different colors and like the lighting and all of those things. Um, and then when I get to editing, it kind of confirms my suspicions about whether or not I, I should put in black and white, you know, sometimes it's totally worth doing. Sometimes it's not like this image. I actually really love in color, but also looks, looks okay in black and white too. I think we lose a little bit of separation from the background in black and white. Um, so I'll probably give both to them, both color and black and white in that image. But yeah, it's it's kind of like a double whammy here. So I see the location. I say, Hey, this lighting is a little tough. Probably going to make this black and white. 
not much I can do about it right now. And then when I get into editing, I confirm, yeah, this is definitely going to be a black and white image or now nah, this will stay in color or I'll do a mix of both for them. I don't, it just depends. But like you can see the, the white light up here versus the, t the tungsten makes definitely makes it a little bit tough. And I can, I can even tone down some of the orange in this image and that helps a bit. But it's all practice, all, ex all, all experience, all experiential. Um, again, very, very orange. Going to tone this down. Everything's really grainy, guys, because I'm, I really did bump my ISO. I took a little bit of a risk and bumped the ISO. I think... Uh, I think grainy images are okay, especially with how the trend is going right now with, uh, you know, kind of these imperfect images and uh, blurry photos, things like that, just leaning into leaning into that being a thing. Plus, when you make them black and white, that looks totally fine with that grain. Um, and I know I'm going to be making a lot of these photos. Like, this is going to be a black and white picture, 100%. Uh, so the grain in my head doesn't matter, which I guess goes back to Johnny's question of how do you decide if it's going to be black and white or not? Do you decide on the day? And yeah, I think I am actually deciding on the day more than I think I am because otherwise if I was, you know, making this color 100%, I don't know if I would boost my eyes so that hard because that grain is going to be really noticeable. Denoise AI, it works so well to get rid of grain if you don't want it. I will check that out, Carly. I've never heard of that. Um, most of the time, yeah, the grain doesn't doesn't bother me too much, but uh, I will check that out for if like a few images that I'm like, hmm, I need to get rid of some grain here without making them look like, uh, I don't know, crazy smooth or something, you know? When you like denoise in, in this uh, detail section, it like smooths their skin out like crazy. Yeah, not a, not a fan of how that, Denoise AI, is it free? Is it a free program? How do you take the orange color out of the shadows? Um, so there's a few ways, I guess. One of the ways I was doing this was I was just dropping the saturation in the HSL slider. I guess the other way you could do this is if you went into the color grading tab and you just, if you found orange here, you can see I'm pumping orange into the shadows right now, into like especially into his, into his suit here. But if you just went to the other direction, you could pump the opposite color in, pump in some blues to the shadows, and that would kind of counteract the the orange. So yeah, you could totally you could totally do that for sure. Oh no, her eyes are closed. Flag that is red. All right. Which one do we like more? Uh, let's do, let's do with cloudy 400H, okay. It's under $100 one time purchase. Ooh, I love one time purchases. That, that makes me happy. I will check that out. Is it like a, is it a plugin? Does it like plug into Lightroom or is it like a separate software, a separate program where I have to to go to a like a whole nother thing, open up a whole nother whole nother program to make it run or work inside Lightroom? Cause that's super sweet. If it could work inside Lightroom, that would be that would be dope. Separate software for me. Okay, cool. Either way, definitely worth having in the arsenal for sure. You can see I'm spending very little time on each image here. Uh, reason being is I know that I'm going to be going back through these and 
like fine tuning, adjusting them when the blog, when I go through the blog images here after I batch and when I go back through after this stream and actually finalize and perfect each of these images uh, before delivering to the couple. What's your settings on this group shot and what lens was used? Uh, yes, so this this group shot was uh, the 40 millimeter Sony 2.5. Uh, my settings were ISO 320, f4.5, and 1 400th of a second. Um, so I stopped down to make sure I got everybody in in focus. And uh, yeah, that was the that was the planned. Now while I'm doing portraits, I'm back up to like 2.8, and uh, still on the 40 here. So it's probably going to be cropped. And probably going to be turned black and white eventually. Yep, that's going to be black and white later for sure. You want to hear everything I'm using this year. I did release a video today about what's in my camera bag for 2023. So that video did go out today. But the 40 millimeter is something that I'm trying to use more often throughout throughout 2023, throughout this upcoming wedding season. I just love the way it looks. I love the, the candid nature of it. Uh, feels like I'm in the action without being like up in people's business, but like, I still feel like I'm, I'm there like in the moment versus like shooting candids or shooting, shooting people on like the 70 to 200 where I'm like really far away. doesn't feel like I'm in the moment at all that, uh, that disconnect in the image. I love the 40 because I feel like I can get up, I can get up pretty close to people without being in their space. grandparents of the bride and groom they were super adorable and uh i took a risk for these entrances because what is going on here is that um <laughs> steph was shooting these entrances on her camera on with flash on and i decided to shoot these entrances with no flash as you can see here this is just natural light in the space Always trying to photograph how it feels, not how it looks, which ends up being somewhat of the same thing. But, uh, you know, the light in the space was very orange, very tungsten, very warm. I think sometimes throwing flash in the mix makes things feel a little bit uh, different than what it felt like in the moment. This will likely be a black and white image as well. <laughs> um, why not? This one actually picked up the flash that. Uh, I guess I took the shot the same time Steph's flash went off. Gino, how you doing, man? For quickly changing scenes, such as the couple walk on the sidewalk, do you still shoot manual or do you ever shoot aperture priority? I am always shooting manual, full full manual all the way. Um, I know people who shoot aperture priority. Cool on them, good on them. Um, I don't necessarily love my camera thinking for me. Um, I like to be in full control of the of the settings of the image i can see the benefit of aperture priority for sure um but definitely prefer to just keep it straight manual um i never really learned how to use aperture priority which is fine i don't think i really need really need to um but i just love the i just love the you know let me use this preset here instead um I just like shooting manual. I've always done it. And because I know my cameras really well, I can just very quickly switch back and forth between settings and make sure things look the right way. And I got the right settings down and uh, everything's pretty thought out in my head at least when I'm when I'm shooting. So yeah, so I took a little risk here, 
didn't use flash for the entrances. Steph played it safe. So we have those, we have those photos, the safe photos of them entering without any blur, without any, you know, super grainy image. Um, and, uh, it's okay to do that. Definitely okay to take risks. I mean, we, sh I shoot so many weddings that if I just did the same thing every single time, it would start to get really boring, wouldn't it? So I love taking risks here and there. Who knows? Maybe they'll love these pictures or maybe they'll hate them. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Like, love that motion blur. Look at that. The warmth of this image and this was how it felt. This is what it looked like in the room. Trying to do that more, trying to take more risks this year in 2023, trying to create images that feel unique to the to the day, to the couple, to the the space. Yeah, that motion blur is very in right now for sure. Everyone's using it. And uh, I think that's cool. I also think that I see a lot of problematic motion blur images where it's motion blur when the couple is like static, staying still, and uh, there's no motivation for the blur. Um, so I'm very specific about how I use it. Um, I want to make sure that that blur is being used in the correct way and actually provides like story and more emotion to the scene rather than just blur for blur's sake. So if you're using blur, definitely keep an eye on why, ask yourself, why would I be using blur at this point? And that may, that may help decide if you should or not. And then once we're on the dance floor, we bust out the flash and uh, get the party started and Still on the 40. Oh, we're back to no flash here. Steph took these again with flash. We have the safety shots. This will likely be a black and white image as well. Although I love the green. I don't know. We'll decide how to edit this a little bit later. And one more in this set, and then we'll move on to the camera. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right, when we look at this out of bird's eye view here, we're seeing everything looks pretty consistent. So that's great. All right, let's move on to my other camera here. Oh, you know what I like to do? I like to tag everything that I haven't edited yet as oh this is this might be a problem here um, normally I tag everything as blue but you know what we'll tag it as a I wonder if I can tag as a flag here we'll flag everything That way, I know what has been edited and what hasn't. Sorry, I'm trying to process my workflow here is a little bit different now that I'm live streaming because um, I did some pre-selecting before getting on the stream here. Carly's asking, how have you or do you want to shoot elopements? I specialize in adventure elopements, but love to see how you edit traditional weddings. Um, adventure elopements sound a lot of fun for sure. But uh, I don't know, I'm so ingrained in the kind of the traditional kind of standard weddings. I do love weddings that are a little bit different than like your standard wedding. Um, I mean, I did like a small wedding, intimate wedding back in November, and that was a lot of fun. Um, I guess you could call it kind of an elopement, but not really. Um, I think an elopement kind of is defined as like, um, if it, oh, how do I describe it? If it was like, on your terms everything you did was because you wanted to do it not because like it's what your guests wanted and so on and so forth you know um i don't know hard to describe i guess um sorry i'm just processing this real quick okay so everything that has a flag on it still needs to be edited 
I'm also selecting the images I just edited so that I know whether or not, like I can just kind of match now. Does that make sense? Um, so let me three star this. Bam, there we go. Great, okay, this makes sense. We got it. You nailed the definition of elopements. Yeah, great. <laughs> Everyone has their own definition, I feel like, of elopements. I mean, the old school definition, right, was running off by yourself without telling your parents and going going to Vegas and uh, getting married to some random guy they've never met or, or a guy they disapproved of. And uh, I don't think that's elopements anymore. Doing things on your terms, I think, is certainly, is certainly how I would define elopements now. Um, And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I would love to do, I would love to do some of that stuff. I think I'd, I, you know, I love traveling, but it's kind of hard to travel, um, every weekend for me. And I, being in Philly, I don't see a lot of people doing like adventure elopements here necessarily. Um, at least if they are, I am unaware of if they are or not, I don't know. How long have you been doing that? And Carly, where are you? Where are you located? Or are you kind of traveling all over the place for, for elopements and shooting that sort of thing? Or are they happening at home, like in in your in your neck of the woods? I'm gonna fix this image because I don't love how this looks. Hang on. Quick, I am. There we go. Kenneth's asking, will there be more behind the scenes videos of weddings in the future? Yes, absolutely. Um, they are, they take a long time to make. And so I end up, uh, I end up not trying to make them very often, even though I would like to, I am working on getting a videographer to come out and follow me behind the scenes at, uh, two weddings this year. Um, both in like, I think they're both in one's in April, one's in June. I'm trying to get him to come out to those, um, those would be behind the scenes photo only. Um, you know, in past years, I've just been strapping the GoPro to the camera and I think that's worked pretty well, but I know for some people it's like, it gets really annoying with the camera going vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. Cause I do switch, uh, you know, orientations, the landscape to portrait orientation pretty frequently. And, uh, which there was another way for me to shoot without having to worry about, at vertical and horizontal orientation changing up and giving people motion sickness <laughs> so yeah definitely want to do more it takes a long time to edit uh right now in the pipeline i have my videos planned out through through june i have live streams planned out through august i think and uh then i'm going to be you know i'm trying to get ahead a little bit so that i can focus on adding some on adding some uh, behind the scenes videos, some extra content, things like that into the mix. Uh, Cause yeah, I would totally like to do, I would like to do some more of that. The behind the scenes stuff does get pretty well and received pretty well. Um, yeah, absolutely. Want to do more of that for sure. Is there anything I can do better in those videos, in the behind the scenes videos that you've, that's if you've watched some of the other ones and you're saying, hey, I wish you did this, I wish you did that. Would love to, would love to hear about what I can do better, make it more educational, make it more helpful. Idaho, wow. Specialize in the PNW. Yes, adventure elements work very well where you are. Um, April twenty, that pandemic was definitely the perfect time to, to switch to elements one hundred percent. Yeah, you're kind of in the ideal. In the ideal location, I think, for for all of that. Um, the landscape, the vibe, the style, the types of people who live out there or who are going to Idaho. I've never been to Idaho, ever. Um, would love to go. I hear it's beautiful. Um, but yeah, definitely, you're. I think you're in the right place with the right market to be able to capitalize on that. Um, most people aren't hiking up into the Appalachian Mountains to, to get married and to elope. Um, I'm sure there are people who do so, but I personally don't know anybody who is doing that. The uh, We definitely don't have a PNW vibe out here on the East Coast, right? It's what, what makes the PNW so unique. 
whether it's Washington, Oregon, Idaho. Talk about Oregon. I mean, holy cow, the place is gorgeous. But yeah, we'd love to do more of that. We'd love to shoot some smaller weddings. I mean, the wedding I shot back in November, which was like a smaller, again, intimate wedding, I shot solo by myself, had an awesome time. It was really fun, um, really low key. And uh, I would love to do more of those. That was that was a ton of fun. Love your crop choices. Thank you. Yes, trying to trying to just crop in on the on the action here on 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 what's happening. Trying to straighten everything out a bit. Um, trying to make the compositions a little bit more appealing. I guess you could say. I can try to catch it a little bit better. This. So interesting, the color differences between lenses, right? Like, same white balance. This image is, just looks so much warmer than the 40 millimeter. 50 just runs a little bit warmer, it looks like. So once I have all of these images edited, I will batch each camera and then I'll go through the blog images and just do some correcting, cropping, straightening, color adjustments, exposure adjustments, things like that. Um, batch isn't 100% correct or accurate, uh, but it does get me pretty close and it means I can, uh, it's, it's less tedious work for me. I don't have to I'm not doing a ton of heavy lifting because it's already done the heavy lifting for me. You'll see me change a crap ton of pictures to black and white. Black and white pictures. This old lady was adorable. So this is pretty much the same as this. Yeah, don't be afraid to crop. If you need to crop in, crop in. It's gonna, it's gonna be okay. Like I need to crop out this dude's head. There we go. That's better. It's an okay image. It's not in my head. It's not like the best picture of all time, uh, but I think it's still worth giving them. Man, that background is so bright. Like these 100% are going to be black and white and they're going to be better for it. Yeah, this tends to be the struggle with these churches is that the background just is so hot like to expose for them. And I'm underexposing them here. And there's it, this background is still like nuclear. Nothing I can do about it. Absolutely nothing. Except put up some flash, which I'm not doing in a church. That's that's too much. Oh, we're back in the church here. Okay. Um, all right, Kenneth. Good. Behind the scenes don't make you sick or dizzy. Good to hear. And they don't make me sick or dizzy either. I've just heard from multiple people that it's like the head whipping back and forth is a lot. And... Uh, uh, maybe I was myself too much, but we'll just stick a GoPro on top on a few of these then this year and see if I can put something together. Hey, all right, all right, all right. And this is what happens when you select images a little bit too quickly. 
I call extra fast and uh, often often end up with a lot of pictures of people with their eyes closed because I'm not paying close enough attention. My bad. everyone doing today what are your plans for this lovely wednesday any sessions coming up anybody have weddings this weekend anybody shooting over the winter uh we this was our only wedding this winter was uh Brian and Sarah here. Okay, hang on. We'll go back. Copy this. Boy, he's got his eyes closed over here. Goodness. I'm on the 50 millimeter 1.4 right now, in case anybody is wondering. Um, I did stop down for this image to F5. Just to make sure everybody here is in focus. There we go. We tend to not shoot too many winter weddings. Um, our season ends up running like uh, April to November most of the time. We did have one in December, uh, or two in December. Our associate team shot one on New Year's Eve, which was a lot of fun for them. And uh, we had one on, on the 7th. So this is kind of the last wedding for us to deliver before we're off for a little while. Everything is... Everything is delivered at this point, which is great. Carly delivering the last wedding of 2022. I have an elopement next month. They want snow. Oh, that is fun. Snowshoots are a ton of fun. I'm sure, especially out in like Idaho area. You guys get a ton of snow out there? Oh, you live in Belgium? Oh, it's evening there now. Well, what did you do with your day, Kenneth? What was the best part of your day? I'd love to hear about it. And it's totally acceptable if you say this stream, 100%, totally fine. I'd love to be the best part of your day. That's so that's so exciting. That'd be so exciting. Belgium sounds great, though. I've never been to Belgium. Never been to Europe, actually. Definitely on the bucket list. Definitely on the bucket list to get out to, to Europe. If it's very Italian and uh, pretty Irish, perfect. And so, probably would be at one of those two places. actually got engaged right here on this spot which is why we're shooting wedding photos here as well because it was meaningful to them always fun when we get to go to a location that's it was chilly i'll tell you that it was cold out it was very windy Got a decent amount of snow this year. We got way more in December than in the last few years. I would also love to visit Europe, Kenneth. Yes, 100%. Need to go to Europe. And uh, do you get, do you like getting snow? Do you hate getting snow? How do you feel about it? Because out here in the Philly region, I like it for like a day and a half. And then the snow turns this nasty brown color. And it's gross. But... We live in like an HOA community, so I don't ever have to shovel my own snow, which is great. Love that. I'm sure I would absolutely loathe snow if I had to shovel my, my way out of my driveway. 
David's asking, how many photos do you usually deliver for a wedding? Typically, it's around 100 per hour that we're shooting. Uh, in this scenario, we shot for 10 hours. I'll likely deliver around 1,200 pictures. Um, I don't limit people, but on average, yeah, it's about a, 100 per hour that we're shooting. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the... Kind of the average there. I love this one. This one's great. And I just walked around this little area in the city and uh, photos, try to keep things really low key. All right. Back to this. Okay. Do you select your photos before importing to Lightroom, the ones you are going to edit? Uh, so normally normally no but because we're doing the live stream and i wanted to save some time i didn't want to have to go through and pre uh i didn't want to have to go through and like select my blog photos on the stream so i pre-selected the blog images that i'm planning to use and i end up over selecting because these blog images end up being used for the album as well um, in the album design and so i end up over selecting so that we have way more to work with in in the design process there and uh, on top of that, they end up going into the uh, the first folder on our gallery service. Uh, we use CloudSpot, and that's going to end up being the first kind of batch of images they see. Um, and uh, pretty much anything that's in there, I want them to be able to just find really, really easily. Anything that they would want. Um, but yes, normally I pre-select sorry normally i don't pre-select but in this case i in this case i did just to save some time on the stream here usually not a fan but this year i am loving it love the snow covered trees and sunsets sometimes make the mountains look pink against the blue that sounds amazing um i'm gonna need to see some photos so if you have an instagram anybody here please drop your instagram in the chat would love to to see all of y'all's work it is blue in this picture. Let's bump that up. I mean, not look thrilled to be getting his photo taken. Uh, do you apply presets to each picture before editing? No. So everything that you're seeing here before I uh, like copy and paste is uh, is raw. So this is. This is a raw image here. There's nothing added. Um, whoops. I probably could. I probably could uh, add a preset on import and save a lot of time, but I just end up, I, I don't end up doing that. Probably could, probably should, to be honest. But again, because I use batch, and you'll see how that works here in a minute, um, I don't feel like I necessarily need to. I don't know. There's so many ways to go about editing and approaching the edit that you know you arrive at the same destination but yeah for me no I just end up editing the raw each and every raw photo hand by hand um, I don't outsource either I used to outsource and while it was really great and easy the turnaround was a little bit slower because I was just waiting on them to the images you know um, the quick editor most of the time, especially when I'm like not talking and I'm fully like focused on the work but because we're, we're chatting here. I'm okay. Taking a little bit of a slower pace and since I'm talking with all of you lovely people. Yeah. Typically when I can knock a wedding out in, in just a couple of hours, we've been streaming here for 55 minutes. I am almost two thirds of the way done these cameras. Normally I can work pretty quickly, but here's some more photos without flash, which I feel like way more accurately represents the tone, the vibe of the space, that warm orange light. This, this makes me feel something way more than 
way more than like this image does, right? This feels way moodier, way more accurate to the tone. This is 100% gonna be a black and white picture. But we'll tone that down a bit, there we go. All right, so Kenneth's in Belgium, Carly's in Idaho. Where is everybody else located? Very interested to know. Ah, oh, this dude caught me taking his picture. Again, probably gonna be a black and white. Okay, okay, okay. Bam. You can see I actually did take a few safety shots with flash so that did happen on my camera you know want to make sure you cover your bases want to make sure that yeah that you have everything you need but in a second we're gonna go and shoot this first dance without any flash and you can i can just feel this picture i was just feeling it in the day i was like i can feel this way more it's very orange we're gonna tone that way down There we go. Let's bump that up. Bam. All right. Definitely going to take a little bit of fine tuning here to get 100% correct, but it's a pretty good starting point. We'll denoise just a little bit more. All right, we got New Hampshire, we got Orlando, we got London. Man, hi Katie, welcome. I didn't know you were here this whole time. Glad you're here. There's 16 people here, and I only have three people: New Hampshire, Orlando, London. Where's everyone from? I want to know. If you're on the stream with me, if you're a lurker, that's okay. I would love even just say hi real quick. Step out of your comfort zone and say hello. It's okay. I'm a lurker on most, most streams I'm on anyway. I don't say hello. Bar Barbados. All right. London, Barbados, Idaho, Orlando, all more exciting places than I'm sitting right now. Uh, no, for sure. Tone down the orange a bit. There we go. Grandma giving the blessing for the meal. I'm accompanying you on your editing day too, so I'm a little quiet. Oh, awesome. Are you editing a wedding as well, Katie? Let's go back to this picture here. Interested to know if I turn down the orange. Here Hey, let's copy that. Can we pull back? All right. All over the place. The internet is a cool place, guys. Put it together. Ooh, there we go. E-sesh, engagement session, and maternity session on the docket. Awesome. I really love editing engagement sessions because they're really easy to edit. And it's like all portraits, so it's always like a lot of fun. Let's 
sometimes don't love shooting sessions only because it sometimes feels like a waste of my time even though i end up having a good time once i'm there but because it's always like right around dinner <laughs> like i just want to be home in the house on my couch eating some food and not out shooting at 7 30 at night but then i'm there and i'm fine but i always love being home so it's all like in one general location makes it much easier than a wedding for sure almost done this camera Got one more camera to go Yes, absolutely. Agree with that. It's always hard when you have to like drive like an hour and a half to like, like for us, like in the Philly area, like it might take me 30 minutes to get into Philly some days. And then it might take me an hour and a half to get into Philly. And then sometimes because I'm in this like weird region, like I'm driving out West towards Harrisburg or I'm driving uh, like an hour or more North towards New York or actually going into the city, into New York city, into Manhattan and it's always fun to do that but it's also like i'm up here for work and i wish i was up here to like explore play and have fun but shooting in those new areas is definitely is definitely exciting more exciting sometimes than shooting in the same place over and over and over again Bring down that orange a bit more. Plane is safe. Plane it safe so I can then take a risk. There we go. See a little bit of purple from the DJ's booth. I hate when DJs have their lights on. Normally I tell them to turn it off. I did not do so. In this case, I probably should have. At least it wasn't like a bunch of lasers pointing at them. Sometimes that happens. I got some bid for a dance, like, hey, turn off, turn off these lights. We shot a wedding recently where the venue had the lights on for the uh, first dance father-daughter dance and then the mother's son was like halfway through and they cut all the lights off in the in the space to give it more of a mood and we we're doing both photo and video for this and i'm like what are you doing like we have our video set to like whatever the lighting is in the room and they just completely cut the lights on us and threw us all off it was so weird it was so weird was not thrilled All right, guys, talk to me about what you are struggling with in your business. Would love to hear an area that you're hoping to learn more of uh, or more about. Um, pretty much any of the things you tell me, I'm just going to log into my content ideas and uh, work on creating content around those things. Um, you know, want to make sure that want to make sure that I'm delivering content that is actually helpful.
And it can be anything. Don't be afraid to throw something out there. Publish a new blog once a month for the whole year. I love that. That's a great goal. No, actually, something that I've um, something that I've been using recently to write blogs is um, you've probably heard of it. It's an AI called Chat GPT, and in fact, the last two I think the last two wedding blogs I actually wrote using AI, um, and really just had them start at like a give me like a starting point. And then I just kind of tweaked things here and there. So I'll probably do the same thing, but maybe I should make a video on how to use chat GPT to blog weddings uh, easily and quickly. Um, because I normally, I, I don't necessarily struggle with writing blogs, but sometimes it is just like, what the heck do I say? Um, and it gets to be a little bit daunting for sure. So... All right, let's uh let's uncheck these flagged images. Yeah, okay, so yeah, Chat GPT is pretty much like it's this it's this software that you can use to just uh like type in uh you can give it a prompt and it will kick something out to you um i wonder if i can give you let me see maybe i can give you an example real quick hang on here we'll pop over to we'll pop into chat gpt real quick and uh okay let's see here Okay, so we're in ChatGPT. If you go to chat.openai.com slash chat, there will be, you know, this, you'll have to log in and do your thing and sign up. It is free. Um, I can see something like this replacing, um, I can see something like this replacing Google or Google integrating this sort of thing um, and making it a little bit, I don't know, more intuitive rather than giving you like a top 10 or 20 page search result. It's going to give you like an AI answer based on scrubbing through all of the info. And so like if I were to write a blog, right, about this wedding. So let's let's say I want ChatGPT to write me a blog. I would say something like write me a um, 400 word blog post about the time we photographed Ryan and Sarah's January wedding in Philadelphia. Uh, and at Scotland Run. And let's just see what it kicks out. Sometimes it's like you need to do a little bit of finessing with the prompt you give it. Um, but it, it can be pretty cool uh, because you can see right now that it's actually just kicking out like a response like i i haven't written anything and this is going to like it's going to give me the majority of what i need um because all weddings are the same like i don't um it's also interpreting like what <laughs> like, <laughs> okay so this is where i got it wrong because it doesn't know what scotland run golf club is um <laughs> this is this is incorrect here a scottish uh Caleb, i don't even know what that is um so you got to be careful using certain things, but yeah, like it was a chilly January day when we arrived at Brian and Sarah's stunning home in Philadelphia for our wedding preparations. That was true. The couple had chosen to have a first look before the ceremony. That was not true. So we started by capturing the excitement and anticipation as they saw each other for the first time on their wedding day. Look, that is half right, half wrong, right? Like we would end up changing this to be like uh, the couple opted to see each other for the first time at the ceremony. And we started by capturing the excitement of each of them prior to the wedding beginning and the anticipation leading up to seeing each other for the first time on their wedding day. So you can just change things around a little bit. Um, after the portraits, we headed to Scotland Run Golf Course. Like the ceremony was at a church. So like you can kind of use this to to tweak, I don't know, just to tweak how, I just I, this is a good starting point for your blog and it makes it really, really easy to to write a blog. It makes it, makes it super easy to write a blog. Um, in fact, the... Um, wedding our associate photographers did for us uh this wedding here 
we we weren't there at all. We had no idea really what happened. So I this entire blog post was written with AI, and then I tweaked some things here and there. Um, so here, I'll just I'll put this in the chat here if you want to read this. But this blog post was based off of a chat GPT. It kicked it out. Um, it's the first blog on our on our blog page on designstuff.com slash blog. And uh, yeah, it's really kind of insane. Uh, so chat GPT is a great tool to use for um, even for Instagram captions, like give me 10 Instagram caption ideas for photographers to use. And it will just kick out like, I don't know, 10, 10 Instagram captions. They might be really cheesy. Like this is, this is, this is pretty cheesy, um, but it's a really cool. So yeah, anyway, this Lightroom stream has turned into a, a chat GPT stream now, but uh, there's like a million different ways you can use this tool. And I think it's something that we definitely should be using uh, in our business. Um, but yeah, who knows for how long it's going to be free, Katie. Yeah. Um, I would imagine there may be a little bit of a paywall, but still I would pay like five bucks or 10 bucks a month. I'm using it that much to, to, you know, to be able to use this. Absolutely. Um, anyway, that's, that's chat GPT. We'll move back into, we'll move back into Lightroom now. Um, but Carly, very easy way to try and publish, publish a blog each month. Um, even if it's like using tips and tools for brides, like you could probably ask chat GPT, like, Hey, um, you know, give me 10 tips. Every bride should know when planning her wedding and it'll kick out like a response and, yeah, like, I don't know. It's a, it's just a great tool. All right. So we are now into my wife's camera here. And my wife primarily shoots on again, a seven, a seven three using the same camera I am. And uh, which one do I want to use? Let's use this one. Um, but she shoots the majority of the day with a 4 to 70 Canon. So we end up adapting a Canon lens. Um, Sony using a Sigma MC11 adapter. We used to shoot Canon and uh, just kept all of that Canon gear. Anyway, sorry, real quick, back to chat GPT. Should I do a video a tutorial on how to write blogs using chat GPT for wedding photographers, for photographers? Yes or no? I think it might be a good idea. It's something that's been like on the back of my mind for a little while. Um, wasn't sure if it was like actually a good idea or not. Even just five ways to use chat GPT in your wedding photography business, like thinking that might be a good idea. I don't know. I really think this is a good idea, so let's do it. Moving right along, people. Moving right along here. Inch. Down. I love when I walk into my clients' homes and I see my pictures hanging on their wall. That's my favorite thing. Very exciting. Hang on, let me full screen this for you again. There you go. You don't need to see my face. bit of noise happening in this image here.
this is going to be turned black and white. Like, you know, the second I see an image, like I'm like, yeah, this is going to be black and white or this is going to stay in color. It's, uh, I'm going to say it's black and white, I think. Probably black and white. Like, I mean, come on. How sweet is this moment? Yeah, I love her dress. Her dress was so pretty. On the sleeves. Like hands down, gonna be a black and white picture. It just hits a little bit different. Like color's okay, but you can feel that a little bit more in black and white. I rode on the shuttle with them. I ended up leaving for the the guys. And uh, she stayed with the ladies. Sometimes we do that. Sometimes we both kind of stay together. But in this scenario, Philly weddings are hard because of the parking issue. There's like nowhere to park your car. And so that was kind of the struggle we dealt with on this day. Kind of. And to figure that out while we were while we were working. Always a fun time doing that, but two hour parking minimum sometimes just is really difficult to work around. So we parked at a free lot under a bridge and then I walked like a mile to the church and then back to the car after the ceremony while Steph shot portraits and um, our family portraits, I mean, at at this church. And the bridge location that you saw earlier, it was like just a chaotic sort of thing it wasn't as chaotic as it sounds i guess but it was it was a lot of walking on a very cold day for me again where is it there we go All right, portraits, family portraits. I definitely overexposed a little bit too much on this. Yeah, and for all right, thank God for shooting raw. Although this lady in the back here is making a face, so we're gonna tag that guy. Too dark, but that's okay. We'll bring that back up. Uh, so we shot these family portraits in this church with a 24 to 70, and we just attached a Godox V1 flash to the top of our camera. Kept it very, very simple. Didn't do anything crazy with lighting. Um, probably would have broken out some off-camera flash, but again, because I parked at a church somewhere, sorry, I parked in a parking lot somewhere else that was free, I didn't carry the stands and the flashes with me. They were all in the car. Um, so we just kind of worked with what we had here. On-camera flash was fine, just pointing straight up. And uh, it, it did the trick. A lot of bounce light. A little bit too bright there. Calm that down. I want to keep that dress in there, but I want to crop in a bit. Which season do I prefer to take wedding photos? Um, it's a toss up between spring and fall, summer. Summer, you know, summer's fine and all, but it ends up being like extra hot in the Philly area in the summer. And that isn't always the most fun because uh, I just end up sweating through everything. Um, so spring spring is still pretty nice and i really love the fall um except fall just ends up being so incredibly busy that that kind of takes away from a little bit of the fun because i'm just swamped with just swamped with work you know um but yeah weather wise definitely definitely spring and fall
about you? What do you prefer? What do you guys all prefer shooting in? Do you love it? I mean, it sounded like Carly loved shooting in the snow in the winter. Um, but what are you guys, what's your guys' favorite season to, to shoot in? Spring and fall for me. I live in South Dakota, so the weather is good year round. South Dakota, SD, San Diego. <laughs> I was going to say, I would imagine South Dakota um, gets some pretty bad winters, but San Diego makes a lot more sense. Yeah, I'm jealous of you, Ben, that San Diego lifestyle. Thanks for being on the stream, Ben. Glad you're here. Man, yeah. Oh, I'm jealous. I'm pretty sure that if I, you know, I almost, I almost went to school out in California. I almost applied. Well, I say I almost went to school. I didn't even apply for a school there when I went to college, but I almost did. And, uh, I studied film in college. And, uh, so California was kind of like the place to go if you wanted to, you know, get into the film, film industry. And I looked at a place in, in California and was like, you know, if I if I move here at all, I'm likely never coming back to the East Coast because I'm that convinced I would just like the weather that much. And uh, a couple years ago, I went out to California for the first time, out to Malibu to shoot. Uh, and um, yeah, I think I was right. I love the weather so much that if, I'm sure if I moved out there, that I was never going to come back to to live back in Philly. Yeah, I just, yeah, I wouldn't either, man. Um, I wouldn't either. Why leave? You got the beach. You got magic golden light pretty much every evening. 300 days of or more of sun. You got to deal with this, some drought and some high expenses, maybe. High living expenses, but... Seems like a pretty, pretty nice place to live. Are you getting slammed with the rain right now, Ben? Or is that just kind of the northern part of the state? I have a friend in Santa Barbara and we have some family out in like San Francisco, Oakland area who are just getting like hit with rain and rain, 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 rain. And which is great because I know that California, you know, that whole state is pretty much just one giant drought. But you know, it's hitting like levels that are almost dangerous for people at this point. I feel like I was reading the other day. Yeah, raining a lot there too. Well, hopefully it gets you guys out of your your drought era for a bit and refills all of the reservoirs and dams for you guys. And uh, you don't got to take 30 second showers if that is something that everyone does out there. I don't really know. Um, I don't know why this sharpening is kicked up so much. We'll tone that down. Here we go. Hey, look, it's me. In Belgium, it's also raining every day. Goodness gracious. I mean, it rains here in Philly, you know, an okay amount, but I feel like in the winter, we just have, it's just cloudy day after cloudy day after cloudy day. As long as I don't have to shoot a wedding in the rain, y'all, that's my least favorite thing. I hate rainy weddings. Hate it. It just adds so much stress to our plate.
All right. Guys, we're getting there. We're almost there. Yeah, Steph grabbed a quick behind the scenes photo of me. I shot a little bit of medium format film at this wedding. Um, haven't gotten it developed yet, but pretty excited to do so. I'm actually gonna be developing a whole bunch of film on screen myself. Um, really pumped to, to kind of learn how to do that. Uh, I'm gonna be testing on a crappy roll that I don't care if I damage first before I develop anything for real. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, uh, for me anyway, this year, I'm really looking forward to expanding my photography education by delving into film a bit more should be a good time i'm sure i will screw a lot of things up developing but that's something that we're doing this year i think that the industry right now is just i think that you literally could charge more if you shoot film on the wedding day even if it's just a couple of rolls um so that is one of the reasons that we're that we're starting to shoot a little bit of film but also because i really i had never really shot a whole lot of film um and it's something i wanted to start doing and experimenting with and a two-fold decision there to, to start doing that um i shot a little bit of 35 millimeter black and white at this film too um specifically during the the reception here at 3200 uh actually the ilford Delta 3200 black and white that I shot. So we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. Everyone's bucket list location to shoot a wedding. Ooh, I actually, I don't even know where Svalbard is or if I'm pronouncing that correctly. That sounds almost Scandinavian. Is that right? Um, I think probably for me, it would be like Paris or somewhere in Italy. Um, that would definitely be like up up pretty high on my my bucket list. Really cool architecture, beautiful locations, things like that. Like you know, you give me a beautiful location, would love to would love to shoot there. Estates, vineyards, man, yeah. Rodrigo, what's up? Welcome to the stream. You're watching here in Brazil. Gosh, I'm so blown away that my channel has reached so many people all over the place. So that's that is super cool. Glad you're here, Rodrigo. Any questions you have, toss them my way. Happy to answer them. All right, we're almost done with Steph's camera here. And then once we're done, we are going to batch these using some AI. And uh, then we're going to go through the blog images and just make sure that the sneak peek I'm delivering to this couple uh, on our blog is going to be uh, pretty solid. All right. And uh, after the stream, I will be finalizing each image of this wedding a little bit more in detail here. And I uh, don't want to put you through that painstaking misery of uh, watching me crop every picture. That's a lot. That's a lot of work. going on with this sharpening i don't know what the deal is there we go almost there switzerland seems like a nice location for photos yeah switzerland seems nice honestly man anywhere in europe i feel like is just gorgeous like i'm sure that's not the case but i've never been so to me everything out there seems kind of like a dream almost do you use Imagine? I recently tried it and was really impressed. I don't use Imagine. I use um, I use Batch AI. I've uh, been using them since they released, and uh, I got no issues with Imagine. Nothing like that. I haven't actually used Imagine, but from what I understand, you know, you got to upload, you know, 
5,000 photos to them and they kind of create your profile or your look, which is totally cool. Um, I just didn't want to be locked into using one type of look for every single every single shoot because I do sometimes experiment with how I'm shooting. I do kind of change up the way I approach wedding or a shoot. And so with batch AI, I'm able to edit what I'm doing right now is editing these reference images about 10%, 15% of the, the shoot with these reference images. And, uh, and then the AI will edit based on these images here. And so I'm able to kind of really change up how I want the, the image, the, the wedding as whole stylistically uh, to look. So Rodrigo's asking, who are these people? Uh, these are just two, two of my clients. Yep. No one, no one famous or anything like that, but uh, it's two really wonderful, wonderful people who are on their honeymoon and having a great time, I'm sure. Got married. We're dancing all night long, having a good time. Okay, cutting. Someone put a photo booth photo in his pocket. Oh, that's blown out. Hello. Let's tone that way down. Let's turn that down. You can see this green tone on their, uh, on their skin a little bit because of all the green uplighting from the DJ. Uh, that's kind of tough. Nothing I can do about that. There is, but it just green in there without getting rid of it. It's kind of hard. Go. To... Post. I always have a, a hard time when there's like the cake is against the wall and they got to face a wall to cut the cake. Never the ideal location to put a cake. All right, one more, and then we're gonna use some of the AI here. Boom, all right. All right let's take a look and see how everything looks all together here. If everything looks consistent for the most part, it does. Nothing is really jumping out at me as like super, super off unless it was shot purposefully that way. These all match, that's great. Okay. All right, so here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna go into each camera and we're going to select every image here. So I have 644 images selected. We're gonna go up to, we're gonna go up to batch AI file, plug and extras, batch AI. And you can see that I have 48,215 images remaining to use in my, uh, AI software this month, it refreshes to 50,000 at the end of each month or at the beginning of the next month. Anchor marker, I've tagged as three star. You can see this image here is my reference, tagged as three star, that's my anchor. Um, I'm not gonna check any of these things even though I could. Um, I can also use auto leveling, although I sometimes find that this isn't 100% accurate. So I just kind of use that later on. I just crop myself and straighten myself. So we're going to run one camera at a time. I'm running my 50 millimeter camera right now. Um, we'll hit OK. And this is going to, I, so I have 79 anchors and it's going to edit a total of 644 images. And we'll see how, we'll see how it, we'll see how it does. Normally it does pretty well. I have a feeling for this, this wedding, because there were so many different lighting locations and lighting scenarios that it might have a little bit of a difficult time, but we'll see. How many years have you been doing? How many years have you been doing wedding photography? Uh, we just finished our tenth full season here. I say full season, but ten years of doing wedding photography. The first like three years, I think we shot a total of. I don't know. First year was like three weddings. Second year was four, and then the third year was three, and then we jumped to eleven. 
weddings that year and then 22 the following year and then i've been above have been above like 25 weddings since since then so okay so you can see it edited all those images you can see already how consistent everything looks even just scrolling through here wait for it to load in pop up pop, pop, pop. there you go so batch does a really it does it does a pretty good job of matching making sure the color is is all there uh this is different from the batch sync option that you'd see down here because it's actually reading the image rather than just applying the same settings across all of them so if there was an image that was a little darker it's going to say hey i know that this is in the same set of uh of images from this location from this lighting setup and it's going to increase the exposure more or it's going to actually change the slider so it's not going to be the exact copy of the settings it's going to be it's going to change because it's as if a robot was editing if that makes sense parker curie are you playing with yourself bed i don't know what that means you might have to re rephrase that i'm not quite sure what that means um Watching from Africa, from Kenya. Awesome. Glad you're here. Moving Wheels News. Glad you're here. Parker, I'm glad you're here too. Um, all right. So you can see we've just done one camera. We're going to go now into the second camera, the 40 millimeter camera, and do the same, the same thing. File plugin, Batch AI. The great thing about Batch is that even unlike Imagine, Imagine, again, I'm sure is great. I know people who use it. Uh, they love it you got to leave Lightroom to use it. And I don't want to leave Lightroom. I want to stay right here, right in Lightroom. I don't got to leave to go somewhere else. Don't got to upload a catalog anywhere. And this is a, uh, essentially just replaced um, outsourcing to editors for us because while it still does take me a little bit of time, I would still be spending the same amount of time adjusting adjusting the images that my editor would give back to me. You know, I want to make sure that I'd be going through and making adjustments and and um, tweaking the things that they're editing because you know if 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 they mess up and i don't check then it's on me i want to make sure that everything matches appropriately and um so this is loading all the images in here we're going to go back into the third camera now and do it one more time and it's really fast y'all it's really fast so if you want to get started with batch it's it's really not that expensive i mean i think we used to pay our editors per wedding like 225 for 30 dollars. it was like 30 cents or 40 cents an image or something like that that they would edit and uh ended up coming to over 200 dollars per wedding that they're that they were editing for us and we just you know we were paying it because that's what the average rate was but with batch i'm paying 200 dollars maybe for the month if that and I can get, you know, if I have 50,000 images to use, that would be like 50 weddings. Because I'm on average, like about a thousand images per wedding. That's a lot of images. I don't need that many, that many images. So batch is great. Okay, so here we go. We have just batched everything here. If we were to scroll through, everything should be edited. All right. All that needs to be done now. And you can see as you scroll through, it takes a little bit for them to to render in here. What we're going to do now is go into the green and I have some red here that I need to edit as well, but um, I'm going to turn off the three stars, 261 images that we just need to go through, edit, correct, all those things. Um, so that's what we're going to do.
Did I lose you guys there for a second? That was weird. Sorry, y'all. My mic cut out. All right. So yeah, we're just going image by image now. 261 blog images is what we're we're going through. And uh, I'm making sure everything matches. Everything is color corrected properly. Everything is straightened and cropped the right way. Um, I'm making images black and white if I need to make them black and white. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of the that's kind of the step I'm taking at this point. And I'm gonna end up doing this somewhat quickly because I want to get these sneak peeks up for the couple this week while they're on their honeymoon they can see a big sneak peek of their wedding day and then i'll go through each and every image later on off the stream and just make sure that everything is is accurate is colored properly a lot of these i don't even need to change right now they're great they look good Wait, Not a little bit. Eat a lot of candids on the day. Always looking for these smiles, interactions between bridesmaids, groomsmen, the couple, like just family, friends. They all matter. They all matter. Always looking out for that sort of thing. How many pictures do you deliver to the couple? Anywhere, uh, you know, around, you know, about 100 an hour typically is what we end up delivering of that we're shooting. So for 10 hours, you can expect anywhere from, I don't know, probably 800 to 1,000, maybe 1,200 images. It all just depends on the day, what the day was like. Um, we shot a lot of pictures this day, so they're getting a lot of photos, a lot of photos from us. And I'm like, I love this in black and white. So we're going to make this, we're going to duplicate it, make it black and white. Make sure that that lens has the lens correction on there. Uh, this was fun. I was trying to sneak a photo of the flower girl because she just kept not giving me a smile anytime I pointed the camera at her. So I had the camera like down on my hip, like just kind of dangling in my hand. And I was able to snap this without looking. So that was kind of cool. Um, and I love this again in black and white as well. So we're going to do that. Same with this one. She was just, just kind of twirling. She was very aware that I was taking pictures and anytime my camera was pointed at her, she did not want to do anything remotely fun. Um, so I snuck this one too while, while my camera was down. of the time that I do duplicate images in why is the sharpening so high I don't know what's going on with that we're gonna have to fix the sharpening across the board here let's just do that now there we go um Oh, it's still pasting settings. Okay. Uh, a lot of the times, yeah, I will duplicate an image and make it black and white. That way the couple has both options. Sometimes they sometimes they don't want the black and white. Sometimes they want that black and white in color. We've been asked that, hey, can you can you can we have the color version of this as well? And then that's just an extra step we have to take and we have to go back into Lightroom and export the color version and it's a whole process. And so we, we do end up duplicating a lot of images to black and white and giving them both the, the color and black and white version, uh, just to make it easier on us in the back end. Um, but there are times where I'm like, no, we're going to deliver this just in black and white because the color version is complete garbage. Um, sometimes that does happen. Most of the time we don't get asked, but you know, 
yeah it's like this i thought was gonna be okay in black and white looks better in color absolutely better in black and white 100 like not even going to question it not going to give them another option this one could go either way i think so we'll give them both Love that. Love that. Love that. Love that. Let me ask, are any of you guys using AI for your editing? If so, what are you using? Imagine there's photo AI, I'm using batch AI. There's a whole bunch of options out there. AI is kind of swarming the market right now, which is cool. Makes our life a little bit easier, but we want to make sure that we keep the artistry in the edit, which is again, one of the reasons I'm using batch AI and not some other editing software. Yeah, I can still, it's the same reason I shoot uh, full manual on my cameras. Cause I want to, want to feel like I'm in control of the image. No, on the AI, I do everything myself. <laughs> That's totally cool. Look, if you don't feel like you need it, then hey, no, no reason to to start using it. Um, no reason to start using it. <laughs> this kid, like again, not sure. Black and white or color? What do we think? Great in both. I think it's great in black and white. Same with this. Is both. And I'm always so interested to hear what software people use. Now, I'm using Lightroom Classic today and every day. I don't really edit outside of Lightroom Classic. Does anybody use Lightroom CC instead of Lightroom Classic? Or um, it's like the same thing as Lightroom Mobile on your on your phone? Um, that's the only time I ever use Lightroom CC is like if it's on my phone. Lightroom Classic is, I think, a little bit more powerful of a tool, at least for me anyway. Some people might like CC. Just to know what everybody uses. Or is anybody using like Capture One or something? Cool version for the MacBook? Yep, yeah, totally. Syncs with your phone. Yep. See, I make a new catalog every time I'm, I open up Lightroom Classic. So like this wedding is the only wedding in this catalog. Um, no other pictures make it in here. Um, the reason I do this is because if for some reason I were to lose the data from one of those catalogs or something, and I would lose, I think I'd lose the edits on that, on that wedding. And I want to be able to go back if I need to. I, I also learned Lightroom in Classic, so I don't. For me, I don't think I ever felt the need to leave. Let's see, my wife's camera and my camera, is, the sync data is a little bit off. I'm not even gonna f uh, fix this one. I think this looks great and a little bit crooked, but maybe it'll look better straight, huh? What do you think? Nah, I liked it crooked. Which one works best for editing? I mean, it, it honestly is, I think it's all preference to be honest, Kenneth. I think that, um, I think it just comes down to per, yeah, it just comes down to personal preference. Um, they can pretty much do the exact same thing, but I think for me, I just prefer the, the workflow of classic a little bit more. Um, but yeah, it, it, I think it's just preference at this point. I'm sure if I dove into like, every single feature and like the tools that are available and things like that. Um, I'm sure there would be a, a sure winner, but off the top of my head, not, not entirely sure. One might be better for editing. It's just all preference. I think. Black and white, black and white.
Oh, I wish they were centered a little bit more. Man. They also had these chairs up here the entire time, even when they like did their first kiss and stuff like that, which I didn't love. And we forgot to grab a shot of them like kissing at the altar without the without the chairs in the way. I'm kicking myself for that. You can see again, it's the moment that matters, but I wish I had thought of to move move these chairs out of the way after the ceremony to get like a clean shot of the the first kiss. Let's crap crap away in. Ah, uh, granny. Old people in black and white are my favorite thing. 100%. Look at that. So good. This I'm going to leave in color, I think. I talked about changing it black and white before, but I'm going to stay color. All right, and you can see that I'm moving pretty quick through these, again, because the heavy lifting's already been done. The creative process has already happened. I'm just now doing some tidying up, some cleaning. Um want to make sure that I'm editing somewhat quickly because time is money, people. Time is money. Messing with some motion blur, having some fun. Um, this was also purely accidental. Um, the motion blur for this, I realized my first like couple images were a little bit blurry. Uh, for these uh, hugs at the end. And then I was like, no, I like the energy that it brings. So we kept, kept going. We kept that blur happening. Couple will like it or not. Who knows? Hard to say. But I like it. I think it's okay. All right, everybody's eyes are open in this one, so that's great. Which means that this picture can go away. Goodbye. Does anybody else have like family members blink like crazy when they're getting their photos taken? I hate that. Keep your eyes open. Look at me. I'm constantly having to like get people's attention. Always the most difficult part. Always the toughest part of the day is wrangling families. It's like wrangling cats, herding cats. And again, shot these on the 24 to 70. I believe we stopped down to, yeah, we stopped down to F5 for these group shots. Don't forget if you have multiple rows of people, make sure you stop down, make sure they're all in focus. We have a flash on camera for these because the church was a wee bit dark. And like I like you saw before, the altar was really blown out, really lit very well, a little too well. And I really like, has anybody ever messed around with like square cropping or anything like that, like or a four by five crop? I don't know. It just simplifies the image a little bit. Like, I love the way that looks. Especially in black and white. That just feels so nice. Yeah, we're going to do that. That looks good. Again, this green is something that some people would try and get out. I'm going to leave it because that was like the mood of the bus. But I might also make one black and white and just bring it a bit. Even though there's a lot of grain and she was kicking 8,000 ISO. It was dark in there. I think I like black and white photos. I really do. I really love black and white photos. It just strips all of the complexity of the image out and just savors all of the emotion, just keeps all of that emotion. Um, I have a guy whose eyes are closed here, so we're going to have to come back and find a photo where his eyes are open or we're going to have to do an eye swap later. Yeah, Kenneth, I definitely like black and white photos. I We just published a blog post on our website of uh, 
like a bunch of our favorite pictures from 2022. And I didn't realize until after I went through all of these photos to find my favorites that I ended up selecting a majority of black and white images. Um, yeah, I don't, I just love, I just love the look. I just love the look of black and white. Yep, eyes are closed again. I called too quickly. Is anybody using AI culling no. though for their for their sessions? Like using, I think Imagine might have AI culling at this point, um, or Aftershoot I think might have AI culling. I think that's what they do. I haven't used any, but wondering what some people think. I have a hard time, hard time switching to like doing that and like committing to something like that because I don't know. I just, I feel like I should again, be in control of these, of, of like my selections, like as the photographer, but I'm sure I could still cull even after it culls for me. I don't know. Anybody used, anybody use like after shoot or something? Again, just a lot of emotion. We're going to make this black and white. All right, we're almost halfway through. Almost halfway through these blog images. I move much quicker when I'm editing after Batch has done its thing, after I've made the the initial edits to these uh, these images here it makes it much easier to just quickly go through, get the image looking how I want it to look. I asked all the groomsmen to speak behind them. Bear hug him. Um, use his booty or something, you know, do something fun. Make him react. So conflicted. Look, there's too many black and white pictures, but we're just gonna keep we're just gonna keep adding them. Definitely make sure guys when you have like a horizon line like this that is like perfectly straight make sure that you guys straighten all of your images to that horizon line otherwise it's going to look crooked regardless of if it is or not definitely straighten it to that horizon line your clients will notice and it'll make a huge difference if you can straighten that out How do you know when the photo is properly exposed? So there's a technical way and an eye way, like just kind of gauging with your eye. Um, way. 
is if you look in the top right corner of Lightroom, you have what's called uh, a histogram. And a histogram will show you different sections of the image. All right. So down at the very bottom, you have your blocks. You got your shadows above that. You got your exposure, which is your midtones in the center. And then you have the highlights above that. And then you have your whites. And so you can actually drag each part of this histogram um, up or down, and it'll change your slider here. So if I grab the whites and drag it up, this is overexposed. Anything that is like beyond when it's beyond this line here, or when something turns red, you see how like this, when I click that arrow on the top right, this turns red, this is overexposed, this is overexposed, this is overexposed, all of that is overexposed on the image, meaning there is no data in that, in that section of the picture. When I pull it back down, we are now we are now properly exposed, although we are still probably overexposing for the skin a little bit. Um, and so you can pull the whites back down, bring the exposure up a little bit. And so what you want to aim for is like you want this histogram to be pretty balanced. And because I have so much sky and uh, water reflecting that sky, it's going to be heavier on this end here. Um, if I were to go to a different section of this wedding, um, you may have more of a, like a plateau almost throughout, you know, but yeah, you want to just pretty much make sure that nothing is clipping on the top. Nothing's peaking here and that nothing is falling into like deep, deep blacks here. You can see like I'm crushing the blacks right now and that is not good because look at all of the crazy contrast in their skin in their eyes in their in the suit so you want to just pull that back up and you can actually see against the uh the edge there when it stops pressing against the border of this histogram and uh that's typically you know somewhere around there is fine um again click these little arrows and that will tell you if something is clipping uh in the blacks or peeking in the in the whites so that's i mean that's the general way to know the other way is to look at their skin tones and be like hey this is what kind of normal human skin tones look like and that is more so what my eye is doing is i'm just kind of saying hey this is kind of what it looked like um this is what normal skin looks like when it's properly lit like you i mean you see people every day probably and know if somebody was you know when something's really bright and when something is normally lit i guess i don't know uh how to describe that but we try and get this pretty close to like correct in camera and thankfully with like mirrorless cameras now like the electronic viewfinder uh tells you exactly what you're going to get when you when you go to shoot it so uh we're trying to get this right in camera i'm not having to do a whole i mean if i showed you the before of this it's not like it's a crazy difference right like i'm boosting the shadows a bit i'm boosting the exposure a little bit to brighten everything up but that's pretty much pretty much where it needs to be Sorry. which saves me a lot of work in editing because i don't have to do like a crazy amount it's why i don't shoot on auto white balance because i'd have to change and you know get all the white balance to be accurate every single picture like if i just shoot in kelvin mode with my white balance uh correct in that one location it was a cloudy day like i can just set my white balance to be the one thing it needs to be the clouds aren't going to change it the sun's not going to be popping in and out of the clouds um if I moved locations or if I moved lighting scenarios, then yes, I have to change my Kelvin. But I typically will stick with full manual mode, full Kelvin, custom Kelvin, and uh, try and get my pictures to be as close, as perfect in camera as possible. Because it just saves me time in the edit. And let's say for some reason you forgot to switch your camera to shoot raw and you're shooting jpeg and you got everything wrong in camera well you got to do some work on those jpegs to make sure they don't look like absolute trash and they're jpeg so you can't really push them that far so for some reason my camera's sd card that i'm shooting raw to decided to go corrupt but i still had all the jpegs at least i shot all of my work correctly in camera so those jpegs should be pretty close to finished not going to have to do too much work to get that that finished jpeg edited the way the rest of my work looks that's a good question though kenneth that's your little lesson on histograms everybody today 
histograms are important. There's also, uh, I think, histograms or waveforms maybe in camera on mirrorless cameras now, which definitely come in handy, um, especially if you're doing video. We do video a lot of the time too, and so having a having a histogram or and a waveform, some uh, those scopes in ca in camera becomes really helpful. It's one of the things that I actually wish that they would add to Lightroom that Adobe would add is I want them to add um, scopes, different types of uh, graphs like this. Um, when I edit video and I'm doing some color grading and color correcting on video, I have a ton of scopes. I have vector scopes, which help me um, determine if the skin tone is too saturated, if the skin tone is accurate or not as well. And I also have waveforms. I have RGB parades. I can tell kind of how the colors are looking in the image and how like data driven they're accurate because the scopes don't lie. Um, whereas my eye might a little bit, I'm not going to be able to 100% accurately be able to tell, you know, what this image look, looks like, uh, what the colors look like in this a few different factors. One, I have a window behind me. I have, um, an accurate monitor, but it's possible that it could be off by a shade or two of, you know, tint or warmth. And I have a big light in front of me behind my computer pointing into my face. So like that could be affecting the way I'm viewing these images as well. So it does change up. Could affect how my image looks. Whoops. Didn't want to do that. Um, so having these scopes is, is something I wish, wish that they would add to Lightroom here. That would be my big request for Adobe is to add those. I keep, they keep adding AI stuff, which is great of that stuff. But, you know, hey, give me some more scopes options. I want to be able to tell if I can accurately, if I'm accurately editing, editing these skin tones, you know. And if there is a way to do it, I don't know how to do it. But maybe they already exist in here, but I'm not aware of it. Normally it would be up in like tools or something. Yeah, no, I don't know where it would be. But I don't think it exists. That's my point. We got lucky too. This this pier here, Race Street Pier, is normally packed with people um, because it was a coldy, coldy, a cold, windy day. Uh, we were pretty fortunate that there was like nobody on this on this pier sometimes it's packed i've come down here for engagement sessions in the past and it's just been like everybody's doing yoga on the pier and i'm like i can't guys we can't we can't really shoot here or interrupt their yoga session um so we got lucky that nobody was here nope love that the question is yes black and white it's been a little while since i've turned an image into black and white I was talking about earlier about using motion blur, right? It's a big trend right now in uh, wedding photography and um, on Instagram for sure. Uh, this is one of those ways where I'm like, hey, like this is the proper use of motion blur. I probably didn't do it the best way possible because they are really blurry. Uh, my setting is one over 20 and F13 and 125 ISO, but uh, there's actual movement to their their body right they're not just sitting still or sitting on a bench and i shook the camera um that's one of my biggest issues with that trend right now is like people are using it and it's not a justified reason to use it um and i'm sorry if that's you and i'm calling you out but um i think that following a trend for trend's sake is not the best thing to do i think we need to have a reason to use motion blur we need to have a reason to do something um and the images i'm seeing on instagram sometimes just don't lend themselves to 
uh, like motion blur sometimes. Uh, it just It's one of those things that's a pet peeve that bothers me. Like I'm all for the blur, but uh, we got to use it correctly, I think. I am guilty, of, of course, of using it. So I am on that, in that boat. Um, but I think our motivation behind why we take a picture and how we take it plays into the overall emotion, the overall feeling. So anyway, my two cents. AB, what's going on? Yes, John, we are live editing, trying to do that more this year. It was the plan to do that last year. And then I had a baby and... You have four of them, so you know, you know better than I do. Uh, but yeah, nothing happened last year, my friend. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Now that now that we got the the baby is like seven months old. Now that we uh, now that we got the hang of things, I think I think I'm able to get back into this a little bit, but. It's a lot, man. I'm a little tired, man. I don't know how you do it with so many kids, John. You're going to have to, we got to do a coaching call, not for photography, but for, for parenting. You got to teach me your ways. How do you, how do you keep your kids asleep? <laughs> it is some work, man. Yeah, I was up at, I was, I woke up at, uh, three o'clock this morning because he was he flipped himself over in his crib and that was it that was it game over got him to fall asleep around five or four four thirty or five and then by that point i was just awake i was awake so goodness always tired i feel you man i don't know how you do it right you got four i'm like look i'm gonna max out at two we can play man to man. I don't need to I don't need to switch and play zone defense here. Sometimes when I say something, my voice drops out. I'm sorry, Kenneth. It might be the microphone. I can kind of hear myself on my monitor here a little bit. It's low. It doesn't sound like it's dropping out to me necessarily, but anybody else experiencing that? Is there a little dropout every once in a while? Guys, we're almost there. Less than 100 images to go. Brighten that up a bit. I'll leave that full color. I always love when brides have giant cathedral veils. It's like, it's the best gonna wear, wear a veil man you might as well go all in on that veil get a big long train way more fun to to shoot with a with a with a giant veil than something that hardly hardly exists give me the long veil every time y'all feel about that you like veils do you not like veils you think it's a pain in the butt i know my brides are like i love this thing but i also hate it get it the heck off she got this veil from amazon by the way um i think she said it was like 50 bucks or something like that it was not a lot of money so she was totally cool like if it got trashed which they normally do by the way i feel like these veils end up being like just dirty muddy mess by the end of the day I love veils. Yeah, Carly, I love veils. They got to, you got to get a veil. I remember seeing photos from Jose Villa when he shot, I think it was um, Nick Jonas and Priyanka Chopra's wedding and her veil just being like super long. I think it was that wedding. And I was just like, that's, I want to shoot that. But also that might be taking it a little bit too far. Like that veil was just a little bit too big. A little too big for me. Okay. Don't need a veil that long, but super elegant for sure.
there's so much you can do when the veils are longer too. When they're short, you can you can't do a veil toss. It just looks weird. You can't get under the veil. It doesn't really work. You can't put the two of them under the veil. You can't have the veil come towards the camera. If you're gonna get a veil, get a big veil. Love this. The flower girl drew this. Painted. Yes, should say painted. All right. Yeah, guys, hoping to live edit far more this year. Like I said earlier last year, we had a baby arrive in June and uh, all of my plans went right out the window as we adjusted to parenthood. And uh, now that we got the hang of things, really hoping to... Uh, to get back into the swing of of live editing i did two live edits last year gonna do that far more this year i have them planned out they're on the calendar all those things are good to go just got to make it happen and uh, hopefully i don't have any crazy tech issues if you're just joining me now you didn't hear about my issues earlier today i couldn't log into my mac because my bluetooth keyboard after i moved it from my house to the studio here would not connect i literally could not type in a password to my computer troubleshooted changed uh changed keyboards uh restarted my computer a hundred times just to no avail i failed in every aspect ended up heading over to target and buying a brand new keyboard uh and um yeah you know it worked thankfully but yeah that was a frustrating process this morning so hopefully we won't have any more of those issues going forward but I know this stream was supposed to start around 11. I didn't get, I didn't kick it off until 1230 because of those, those problems. So it is what it is, it is what it is. We're good. I'm over it. I'm not bitter. And an instance of motion blur done, I think correctly, where there's a lot of energy from the couple. It's not just me wildly shaking my camera, trying to get some blur. The couple is motivating this blur. Same with this image here. She's twirling. Of course, there is going to be a little bit of motion blur. I love that. I love the look. And then some standard flash. Looks good. Can't go wrong with some flash. It's a match with uh, some natural light that's just in the room. Trying to shoot how it feels, not how it looks. And it definitely felt warm and cozy and loving and welcoming and inviting and all that stuff. And I think that the natural light in the space lends to this feeling a little bit more than some bright white flash does for sure. It could not It could have not paid off though. I think it paid off here, but I think in some instances it might not work very well, but I think in this instance it did so. What do you guys think? I mean, I like knowing at least that if I forgot my flash or if my flash died, I could still shoot a reception without it and get some some images that still look good. Hopefully that never happens, but... Right, we're going to turn off my camera there real quick. There we go. But when you have a second photographer and you can have them kind of get some safe shots, as I mentioned earlier, it's okay to experiment. It's okay to mess around. You know those safe shots are going to be covered. You know, uh, the only thing that's going to differentiate you from another photographer is the way you see the world. And... Uh, you know, we're all using the same gear, the same cameras, the same tech. Everything is, you know, amazing nowadays, you know, whether you're shooting on Fuji or you're shooting on Sony or Canon. The mirrorless cameras, it's hard to produce a bad image today. 
The only thing that's going to separate you from the rest of the pack is how you shoot, how you see the world, how you edit, how you how you view this art form, and uh, taking some risks is the is is the way to do it. Is the way to to stand out amongst the hundreds and hundreds of photographers in the in the country. So don't be afraid to experiment, mess around with some new techniques. I mean, I shot these toasts pretty much entirely without flash. Um, you can see because of that, there is a little bit of blur here because I'm shooting at one over 50, probably a mistake, but looks good in black and white. That look is very in right now and that's totally okay. I think this, these images will last 50 years or more without feeling like a trend. That's the thing to be careful of when it comes to these trends that are popping around Instagram right now is are they for the moment? Are they for now? Or will they survive? 50 years from now because what you don't want is your couples looking back in 50 years and being like oh you remember that trend i mean does anybody remember when selective color was a thing when you you know you take a picture of a flower and you would keep the rose in red and everything else would be black and white i cringe looking at that stuff now but that was a thing back back in the 2000s y'all so Ask yourself before you start doing a trend. Hey, is this gonna is this gonna survive the test of time, or is it gonna be is it gonna be a little bit uh, a little bit outdated in a year or two? Not selective color. Yeah, cringe, right? Super cringy. That selective color uh, hurts my soul a bit. For sure. Or you can use it correctly in a movie like uh, Schindler's List, right? Where you have the girl walking through with just the red coat on. Like that's used in a motivated way. I'm sure there's another movie that does it, but I can't think of it. So again, everything just needs to be motivated if you're going to do it. There needs to be a reason behind it. see this flash over here this is the tough part about this venue is the crazy amount of windows let's see if that works that's a hard no that did not work that looks worse than it did before we're just gonna leave that whoops there we go that's good that looks good I love that look from him. That's so good. Sometimes you just get lucky. I've learned too over the last 10 years, like photography isn't just how to take the photo. It's when to take the photo. I waited for this look, guys. I waited. I was on my knees waiting for this look for him to look at his bride. My knees hurt after this, guys. My legs were killing me. I need to start like working out again because by the end of the day i am beat up y'all always looking for important players too these are the parents of the bride always looking for moments like this All right, we get in there. Some of these images, a lot of these dancing images, I don't feel like I have to do much to them at all. Uh, they're pretty solid as is. Our dance. Anybody else editing weddings right now? I know Katie said she was editing weddings or, or an engagement session, maternity session. Who else is editing along with me right now? Anybody? There we go. 
dude. Black and white, no surprise there to some of you. I think I've added probably 50 black and white images so far. Ridiculous amount. Black and white too. Yep. Mm -hmm. I gotta fix the syncing issue. There's a problem with the capture time of my camera versus my wife's camera. It's a little bit, a little bit off. Gotta fix that before I export. It's in a little too tight. There we go. Come down, down. Bam. Okay. Um, black and white. And there we go. End is in sight, y'all. We're almost there. Took me two and a half hours. Good. Sit that out. Great laughter. See, this is one of those instances where I like it better in black and white because of all the crazy color in this image. And I can just focus on these two women's faces, just laughing with each other, having a great time. Grandpa out on the floor. And so much color in this place. There's yellows, there's greens. Good. You guys have been married for like 50 something years on the anniversary dance. Make that black. Love this picture. I was jazzed when I took this picture. Bride and groom in the foreground, camera over their heads, looking at these two lovebirds just laughing with each other, giving advice to the bride and groom. I could probably even do like a uh, linear gradient to pull my focus into the bride and groom a bit more. I could probably do that again up here. Oh yeah. Thanks Kenneth. I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. I'm pretty pumped. These will go on the blog. Um, uh, probably today. So if you guys end up uh, want to see how they all kind of look paired together, uh, you can hit the website, sciencestaff.com slash blog. They'll be one of the first images on, or one of the first blog posts on that site. I'll take a look at how they all turned out. Because it is hard sometimes to envision like this as a whole gallery when you're going image by image over the course of two and a half hours. I always feel much better after my images are presented in a in a way rather than how I feel about them while I'm editing them. I always feel better after they're they're in like presentation mode. 
I don't know if anyone can relate to that, but I'm nervous when I'm editing. I'm like, ah, I don't know how I feel. And then, and then I put them all together and I'm like, ah, yeah, this feels nicer. I like this. <laughs> all right. Do I, do I do it? Nope. Yo, my AC just kicked on in here and it smells like Chinese food or something. I don't know if someone's having something else in the building, but there is some Asian food coming in strong through that vent. I can't tell if it smells really good or not great at all. Uh, some may go to Instagram. Um, I'm pretty selective about what images hit the gram. Um, very specific about it, but yeah, there will likely be a, a handful that, um, that go on Instagram. Um, I'm interested to know if this looks pretty good in a one by one square crop. It does. I like it. All right, guys, we did it. We made it through. Blog images are edited. Only thing I have to do now is go through the rest of these photos in this uh, in this wedding, make the same adjustments I just did to these blog posts. I have another uh, 700 or 800 pictures to do that with. So that's going to be that's going to be some work. But uh, yeah, so that is that is this stream. Thank you guys for Thank you guys for joining me. Um, I hope you had a good time. Look, I'm going to be doing this way more. We don't have another wedding until April, um, but maybe I'll be back doing this with some engagement sessions, things like that. Um, maybe we'll do some live streams. I don't really know what I would do if I'm not live editing. Maybe I'll edit some of your photos. I know that's something that John Branch does who popped into this stream. So thanks, John, for joining me for a bit here. And uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll figure out. We'll figure out. Chris Golden, you just popped in here. Chris, look, the live stream can be replayed. You can hang out. It's a, it's two and a half hours long. It's a long stream. Um, but we'll, we'll be doing this more this year. Um, the kid threw me off last year when we had the baby in June. So I'm not, I don't foresee anything that drastic happening in my life again this year. Knock on wood because, uh, yeah, I say that who the heck knows, right? Um, anyway, thank you guys for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, any questions about anything at all, leave it in the comments of this video. Don't forget to hit that like button as well. And please subscribe. I have to say all that for the algorithm. And um, yeah, I appreciate you. Take care. Have a great Wednesday. Bye-bye.